Mike Owens here. Today I'm joined by Giga Chikadze, who returns to action UFC 304, facing Arnold Allen in Manchester, England. Giga, great to sit down and chat. How are things with you today? Great. Sweet to be with you, man. All good. Just finished training, we came home, preparing to go on my second one now. Big fight number coming up against number five in his in his home country of England. How are your emotions ahead of your return in July? Perfect, man. I'm excited to get to Manchester. I have not been in England for a long time. I've been in 20, 2002, I think. Mm. Pretty long time ago. And um, uh, I visited well, London and Birmingham so far. And uh, excited to get in Manchester. I've never been there. Been hey, a you... big fan of the soccer teams. Uh, United back in the days. Now City is killing it. So... It's awesome to be there. I'm a Liverpool fan, Giga Liverpool FC, so they're big rivals. So I hope <laughs> you're not. I hope you don't turn up to Manchester in a, in a Manchester Actually, United shirt. Little bit of a technical difficulty there, but Giga, you were talking about football. Who who is your team? Who do you support? Uh, back in the days, Manchester. Uh, so I was a fan of Barcelona. But as a team, I was rooting for Brazil and uh, England, like for the World Cups. Mm. From the from nineteen ninety eight, I was a big fan of uh, one of the player I I really loved was Michael Owen mm. from Liverpool. My yeah. name is Michael Owens. One one letter <laughs> difference. Oh, that's so cool! Yeah, <laughs> they used to call me Owen. You know, like how the kids give the nicknames, right? Mm. So, I love it. I how, loved all back in the days. How do you react to the to fighting at three o'clock in the morning? That is that is roughly when you'll be scheduled to fight. Yeah, that's definitely the challenge. But uh, I feel like I've been I've been in a lot of street fights and uh, after the club, so I feel like that's gonna be the one of the <laughs> <laughs> uh, one another one, you know. So yeah, it's not the perfect time for the athletes uh, to compete. Uh, 3 a.m. But uh, since I'm based in California right now, so it's going to be a good time for me. It's a little bit interesting. Uh, I was thinking to get there like two weeks earlier than the fight. But this time, I'm going to try to go latest I could go. So I'm just going to do my obligations there, whatever I'll have a media. And waiting and press conferences, and uh, after that, right on for the fight. Do you think it's a disadvantage for the UK fighters? Because as as you mentioned there, you can delay your journey and almost keep your keep your body clock on the US time. Do you think it's maybe an advantage for you guys making the trip over, and a disadvantage for the English? Like a fifty fifty, because they've been there. They have a home, so they don't need to get there with their teammates to rent places, find the gyms. So for them, pretty much it's easier because they just need a big uh, shade, shades mm -hmm. for the windows to cover mm -hmm. and sleep in the morning and wake up later in the night and train. But for me, let's say, who is based in California and fighting on a California time, but... Weather-wise, if I'm thinking to move there two weeks earlier to adjust the weather, uh, that will be a challenge because I don't know nobody there. I need to find the gyms there. Mm. I need to ask them to open at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's like uh, bring a lot of people, teammates. So, yeah, I feel like it's like 50-50. For them, is the time is no perfect. And for me to travel and all the weather, so we'll see. I feel like fans absolutely love your style, the way you your come forward style, but especially with the Giga kick. But obviously, you're fighting an Englishman in England. So, what crowd crowd reaction are you accepting when you make the war? Do you think they'll be happy to see you? Do you think there'll be booze? What What do you think? I think. Um... First of all, uh, between the English and Georgian flag, and a, lo a lot of similarities, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's one good thing. Another thing is, uh, I feel like my style is uh, something that uh, English fans would appreciate the style. 
you know, it's not like about uh, their homeboy. Uh, he comes from Ipswich. I've heard about the Ipswich. What, uh, what's the difference from the Liverpool, Manchester, mm -hmm. London, Ipswich? You know, I see there is some little difference with, between their own people inside mm -hmm. as well. So I think uh, I'll attract uh, English fans with my striking style, and I'll um, I'll get a little love from them too. We'll see. You mentioned your striking style there. I mean, Arnold in his last couple of fights has, has been striking, you know, with the knockout of Dan Hooker, his last couple of fights against uh, Max Holloway and Mosfar Ivlowev. But he's facing you, the credential kickboxer. I'm wondering if you're planning for a wrestling-heavy attack from your next opponent in this fight. Uh, I know he's well-rounded in everything. You know, he's not... Uh the best striker, but he's not the best wrestler or best grappler, but he has everything and he's pretty solid in everywhere. He has a knockout power too. He has the speed, footwork. I've seen some wrestling from him and I've heard about the grappling, but I have not been, I have not seen a lot. So physically he's a strong dude. He's always in a good shape. It will be interesting, you know, like whatever he brings on the table. One thing I know, I'm a pure striker, you know, so I know what what he thinks he's going to expect from me. Mm -hmm. But uh, my style is so, um, so variety. I have so much that uh, my behind might be knee, might be kick, might be some spinnings. We'll see what happens. I don't, I don't even know. You know when the, the ring bells, uh, I can't control myself. I'm explosive, emotional fighter. Usually, I try to keep my game plan, but when fight starts, I'm just um, I'm just a ninja inside the game. I love it. How you'll be thirty six in August? Um, how important at this stage of your career? Is keeping active and trying to get up to, up to these rankings and obviously to that title fight because obviously in the last couple of years I think we we last saw you in August so it'll be close to a year since your last fight so how important is staying active at this stage of your career? Uh yeah I'll be thirty six in August thirty seven next year thirty eight next year but mm. all it matters is like how good shape I am mm. I feel great uh, my body feels great. I've been an MMA fighter not too long, but long enough to call myself mature. Mm. You know, I started with karate a long time. I spent kickboxing a long time. So now it's time for MMA, and I feel like I reached my maturity in MMA game. Uh, I'm glad my body keeps up and uh, keeps me in a good shape. I don't feel the age. I always get uh, the when people don't know me how old I am. They they pretty come low, so I'm glad to hear that. And um, as an action, I am still the same sharp, same explosive. I feel like uh, I gained with the age more than I lost. You know, mm. so I have a longer long mileage to go still. I couldn't get you on today without talking about the Giga Kick because I hear a lot about it. And I'm not a martial artist. I'll, I'll be honest with you here today, Giga. I'm not a martial artist, but I see a lot online about what the Giga Kick actually is. And I'm not quite sure if anybody online actually knows what it is. So I'd like to know from your perspective, describe to me what the Giga Kick actually is. Giga Kick. <laughs> a Giga Kick might be the many different kicks, you know. My arsenal is a lot. So, so far, people been calling Giga Kick my setup in a liver kick mm. because I got a bunch of the knuckles. Mm. But uh, Giga Kick 2.0 is even different. So, we'll see what happens in this fight. I would like to bring some other other kicks, which I had have it, and um, I'm working on it to put in a game now. And I guarantee you guys that it's going to be really entertaining. There's a lot of incredible strikers in the featherweight division. Is there one guy at 145 that you think I would like to test my striking skills against his striking skills one day? 
Definitely, Max is always a fan. Yair always a fan. Mm. This is a fight I've been calling for a long time. I've been calling Caceres and uh, Barbosa, and so far I've got it. Mm. Uh, definitely, the Cater rematch, rematch would be always awesome inside UFC or outside. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. You know, uh, Featherweight is a stuck division with uh, entertaining fighters, and that's not only about the strikers. You know, like. Yeah, today they call me MMA fighter, not uh, not to karate or, or kickboxing. So I have a profession. Uh, I want to be the best. I feel like I'm the best, and I want to uh, to test myself the best of against best of the best. Why did you say inside or outside the cage with the Calvin Cater rematch? What what is what is the uh, what is the issue there? Uh, not an issue, uh, and not uh, I didn't mean the streets. I mean uh, something that's I feel like a lot of MMA fighters these days when they retire go in a boxing. Oh, and nice. even anything the any type of the sports to challenge cater, this fight was so much in Toko in the fence. So I feel like the some nice pay per view would gather us both of us a good money in the future. Can I ask you, because we often hear this phrase in mixed martial arts of you win or you learn. That was your only loss in the UFC. So my question is, what did you learn from your five rounds, from your from your second main event against Calvin Cater? Uh, definitely a lot. Uh, I was actually talking to my dad like last night about my losses, which I have in MMA, three losses mm. total. All these three losses were a good lessons to me. And I don't remember my wins as much what I what I learned from as from my losses. First was pretty much the debut, then in the contender fight, and then inside UFC, my only loss with Cater. Uh, with Cater fight, honestly, I gained a lot. I gained so much as an as an uh, confidence too that I can be in a five round. I'm tough. I'm not getting knocked out. I can when my hands cannot follow me. My body still can't take it. All this stuff gained a lot of confidence inside me. And uh, also I've seen what I have to work on more. Uh, how can I get better? And uh, like many stuff, you know, I cannot really go in details right now, but it was a good lesson. But there was not a day, as I said before, to, you know, Hundred percent. Well, if we turn back to the fighter hand, you're ranked right, right number nine in the division. You're facing number five. So, past claiming that number five ranking of Arnold's, what do you think a win on July twenty seventh does for you in the division? Uh, I definitely become in that spot where I belong, and I'll be one of the guy who will be in a title talk. And uh, yeah, that's definitely um my goal. Everybody's goal, I feel like, has to be to be a champion, and that's been my dream always. I'm loyal to my dreams, and I'm still keeping the same energy. It's interesting, Giga, because other than Dan Ige, who's set to fight Joe Anderson Brito, nobody else in the top 15 is booked to fight other than your fight against Arnold. The whole of the division is not booked right now. So how do you see the rest of the division playing out? Who do you think deserves to fight for the title next? Who would you maybe like to fight next with a win against Arnold? How do you see everything shaking up? Uh, till Arnold fights, that is a two months. I believe in these two months, a lot's going to change. Mm, so true. I'm not concentrating on that right now. All my concentration is uh, on Allen. Actually, not really Allen, on myself, because... Uh, all my fights, one of my last three, four fights, actually four, four fights, been always with injuries. And this time, uh, especially when it's a long time, I always get injured mm. uh, with a long camp because I'm the I train like three, four times a day, and my mentality is, was like the to work harder and as many as I can. But right now I'm like trying to do a little different. I'm concentrating on recovery. I'm every day I do like three hours of 
physical therapy or some different therapies that helps my body. Uh, got the cold plunge sauna, all the different tools upgraded my house and uh, trying to stay healthy, you know. So Alan might get injured. Anything might can happen. So I'm concentrating on myself. It doesn't matter who's going to be in front of me. I know I'm the best featherweight, and I know I have to concentrate on myself when I'm healthy. When I'm 100% ready, there is nobody that, that can stop me. And uh, can be Alan, can be Yair, can be Max, doesn't matter, you know, whoever is going to be. And when I'm healthy. So right now, all the camp is through that. The motivation and all the concentration is be healthy and train smart. I love that. I love that. Um, the man who holds the world title, Ilya Taporia, is a, is a countryman of yours. You are both from the country of Georgia. What were your emotions seeing Ilya win the world title in, back in February? Oh, when he won, absolutely. I was so happy for him. I know him very well. I know his family. A lot of Georgians came to support him. Obviously, me, with my whole family, we were there all four and uh was really exciting to see the the fighter who has the Georgian blood to become a champion. How would you how would you feel if, if you potentially get to a world title fight? Would you fight Ilya? I mean where are you guys in terms of a friendship or would that would that be an issue or is it a case of if that day comes one day, it's just it's business? You know, let's see what happens. First thing first, you know, yeah. let's go go through this fight. Um, I'm not concentrating on that right now because I have a big fight coming up. I wish Ilya all the best to him and his family. And as I said, I'm loyal to my dreams, yeah. of course. And uh, looking forward to fight Arnold Allen first. 100%. Well, a couple more from me, Giger, and thank you very much for the time. Um. There's a lot of debate in the sport right now after Max Holloway's knockout at UFC 300 about what's the best what's the best knockout in MMA history. So my question to you as a knockout specialist is what makes a great knockout in combat sports? Uh, what makes the great knockout? What makes a great knockout? Is it the way the guy falls? Is it how early or late in the fight it is? Is it the timing? What, what is it for you personally that makes a great a great knockout? Uh, great knockout. Great knockout can be many different ways. Definitely the Max and Justin fight is one of them. But uh, let's say if Max would do that from the way beginning, from the first round, it would be more for me than seeing the tired Justin Gagey and Max being light on your his feet and mm -hmm. calling that. But same time, Definitely give a credit to Max because he kind of felt, was feeling that he already had the fight mm. uh, and he still did it. In general, when we're talking about the one of the best knockouts in MMA, always re I I rem remember the Masvidal knee. Mm. Uh, I remember Barbosa spinning kick, Showtime kick from Pettis. Or even a giga kick. So I don't know. That's are probably one of my best knockouts so far. The last question from me. I would like to know in a perfect world, when you wake up on Saturday, July twenty seventh, what happens when you wake when you go wake up in the morning to when you go to sleep at night in a perfect world? You mean before the fight? I'd like you to give or... I'd like you to give me a walkthrough of your fight day. So I'd like to know in a perfect world. What happens from the very first moment when you wake up to when you go to sleep that night? I wake up, do a little shake-up training, go have a nice brunch breakfast, loaded, having a little fun, seeing my friends, family, whoever shows up on the fights, my supporters, go take a little nap, go in the club, start fun part for them, go in the fight after beat Allen and celebrate back again <laughs> <laughs> I love it Giga thank you so much for your time today it was great to sit down and chat 
as I mentioned off camera, really looking forward to covering your next fight in Manchester. Look forward to seeing you there. Have a great and safe rest of camp. Thank you. Thank you, Michael.